Hey first grade, how's it going? <clears throat> Welcome to a brand new day of drama class. Now my friends, I hope you had a great day off on Wednesday, off, or a great break from drama, but now that we're back, it is time for us to finally have the conversation I've been saying we we're going to have about how to split up these emotions, right? The emotions that we read about in the book, Today I Feel Silly, right? So we have, like I said, 12 emotions in this book. We have silly, angry, confused, joyful, quiet, excited, cranky, lonely, happy, discouraged, sad, and great. And the girl in the book felt all of these emotions in so many different ways, right? And the big thing that we want to do, my friends, we want to go ahead and figure out how to split these emotions into two very important categories. And I'm going to write those categories in the middle here. So, sorry, it's a little close. Let me rewrite this real quick. Sorry, friends, give me one second here. Okay. So, we have two, like I said, two important words on the board. We have comfortable and uncomfortable, right? And our job, friends, is to take these emotions and make put them into the right categories. So, let's go ahead and think about these words. Comfortable means that we feel good, right? Emotions that make us feel great. We don't have any worries, we don't have any troubles, we just feel awesome, and they always make us feel great and good. Uncomfortable means, of course, that they don't make us feel so great. Maybe we don't feel bad or terrible, but it's hard to think about them and it's hard to talk about them sometimes. So some emotions will be comfortable and some emotions will be uncomfortable. So let's go ahead and try to put them in the right places. Now, silly, the title of the book. Today I feel silly. Now, we talked about what silly means, right? We just feel crazy and we feel wonderful. We feel like bouncing off the walls. So I think that we can safely take silly and we can put it under comfortable, right? I think that's a safe bet. Now, angry. Now we all know how it feels to be angry, right? You feel mean, you feel red-faced, right? You just feel, ah, so angry about everything. Angry, I think we can safely put underneath uncomfortable. All right. Our next one is confused. Now, confused is another one. That one, sometimes, well, yeah, you don't really know what's going on. You don't know what's happening. You have lots of questions about things. But it doesn't feel good because you don't feel like you have the right answers. So I definitely would say confused would be under uncomfortable.
All right, then we have joyful. Just like in the movie Inside Out, right? We have the emotion joy. Joy means we feel wonderful and bright and sunny. Joy definitely goes right, joyful definitely goes underneath silly as a comfortable emotion. All right, so we can get rid of it here. All right, now we have an interesting one. We also have quiet, right? Now, quiet is interesting. I'm gonna do something with quiet. Some people might disagree with me on this, and that's okay, but I'm going to put quiet right in the middle. Because sometimes you're just quiet, you're sitting, you're thinking about things. You don't feel really bad, right? You just don't feel like talking, but you're comfortable. You might be relaxing, you might be resting. You're being quiet, but it's a good kind of quiet. Now, you might also be quiet because you're shy or you're nervous and you're a little unsure about something, right? So that might be a way to be uncomfortable. So quiet is interesting because it fits into a little bit of both. There you go. All right. And last but not least, we have excited, right? Get big and excited faces. I think that's a pretty easy one, right? I think we can safely put that one under comfortable, so we will. Excellent. So, so far, let's see. We have two and a half for comfortable. And we have, sorry, excuse me, three and a half for comfortable, and we have two and a half for uncomfortable. So comfortable has a good lead so far. Let's see what else we can do. Cranky, right? We feel cranky, remember? Cranky means you're a little mad, a little frustrated, your day's just not going your way so far, so meh, you're kind of grumpy and cranky. Cranky's definitely an uncomfortable emotion, right? So let's put it right here. Cranky. Lonely. Feeling like you're all by yourself and you have no one to talk to and no one to play with definitely falls under uncomfortable. Sometimes you want to be by yourself and that's okay, right? But lonely is when you're by yourself and you don't feel okay. So lonely is probably, at least for me, right? Aside from sad, lonely is probably one of the biggest ones that goes underneath uncomfortable. All right. Then we have happy. I think happy can safely go under comfortable, right? Happy, we have joyful, we have excited, and we have silly. Happy definitely fits with all those. So happy can come off the side here, and it can go comfortably under comfortable. All right. Then we have discourage. Remember, discourage was our big one, our big 11-word emotion. Discouraged belongs... Remember, it's another word for frustrated. So discouraged, I think, definitely belongs underneath uncomfortable. Because it's not a good feeling when you think something's going to be easy and it's going to take a short time, and it's hard and it takes a long time. So discouraged definitely goes underneath uncomfortable. And then we have sad. Feeling sad never feels good, right? We all know that. We cry, we make terrible faces, we frown. We don't feel good. So sad is a big, probably the biggest uncomfortable one. But don't worry because we also have great, right? Like, and great is the simplest way you can feel happy. 
You did a great job. You feel a great feeling for somebody, right? Great love, great anything. So great, definitely. Oops, no, sorry, let me adjust my friends. Here we go. Great, can comfortably go under comfortable. Haha. -ha. All right. So there we have it. Let's see. One, one, two, three, four, five and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. Hmm. Now see, that's the interesting thing. We have the book called, the book is called Today I Feel Silly. So you open the book and you think you're going to see, you know, lots of fun emotions. And you do, right? We have five and a half very, excuse me, comfortable emotions over here. But it's very interesting to see that there's just one more uncomfortable emotion than all the others, right? Uh, compared to the comfortable ones. So we need to talk about those because when you feel an uncomfortable emotion, it's helpful to think about how we can talk about all of these and how we can make our friends feel better, right? So I feel like the best way to tackle an uncomfortable emotion, right, is to talk to a friend, to th either talk to a friend or maybe think about things that make you happy or just take a deep breath in, let it out. Or sometimes you can close your eyes and you can very quietly count to 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you'll definitely feel better, right? So let's see. A lot of these emotions are difficult. A lot of them are very, very, very hard to talk about. And if you're able to find someone you love and you trust to talk about them, you should be okay. And guess what, friends? We all feel uncomfortable emotions from time to time. I know I have, right? And the best way to, I think, deal with an uncomfortable emotion is to feel comfortable talking about them. Now, I know I can't see all of you, and I know not everyone might feel good about talking about a time when they felt uncomfortable with any of these emotions. But just for this class, I think it's best if I sit and talk about how I felt uncomfortable and how I felt better, right? So let's start with, let's see, let's start with angry. I'm trying to think about a time that I felt angry. Well, I can think about, actually, I can think of one, right? I was, um, about four years ago, I was looking for a job, right? Now this is before I decided I wanted to be a teacher. I had tried to be an actor, right? And it worked for a while, but then I felt like trying something else. So I tried to get a job and I didn't get it. And I was very angry. I got very upset. I was yelling, I was screaming, right? And it just, you know, you feel sad, you feel angry, right? You feel like you didn't do good enough of a job and it just doesn't feel good, right? But my parents were very nice and they reminded me, you know, that, you know, you've done a great job with children. You've done a great job with acting. Why don't you teach acting and drama to kids? And I realized that maybe I should, you know, instead of being angry about the fact that I didn't get the other job, I should try to be a teacher and I should try to teach kids drama. So I went back to school and I got uh, everything I needed to get, and here I am teaching drama. So when I was very angry, right, I talked to somebody that I cared about, right, somebody who I knew loved me, and that got rid of me feeling angry. So that's a great way to prevent yourself from getting angry. All right, moving right along. So confused, right? You feel confused sometimes. You're not sure about something, you don't know what to do, and you know, it just feels so, so weird. Now, let me tell you something. 
I talked in the past about feeling excited, right? A time when I was excited. I was excited when I got hired at Og Prep, but there was a lot of paperwork I had to look at, a lot of things I had to figure out, and I tried to had to figure out my I had to figure out my schedule, I had to figure out my lesson plans. I had lots of questions and I was confused. I was confused about how to make it all work. Could I really do this, right? Could I make the kids happy, make the students happy every day? Could I make all of you happy every day, right? But the nice thing about working here is I have lots of other teachers who are willing to help me out. Uh, Mr. Carlberg really helped me out a lot, right? So when I was confused and even a little bit scared, right? Everybody said, you know what? Mr. Roth is a nice guy. He's brand new at this. Let's just help him out so he doesn't feel confused. And that made me feel so good. That made me feel joyful. That made me feel happy. That made me feel great all at once, right? So that was a great feeling. So if you're confused, there is always someone who's willing to help. And let me tell you, my friends, it's always okay to ask for help, right? We all need help on something. So never, ever, ever be afraid to help out with somebody. All right, moving right along. Okay, so we have a more interesting one right now. We have quiet, right? Now sometimes, you know, when I have a break between my classes, I'm in my room by myself right now. Sometimes after a busy class or a class that might have been just a little louder than usual, I like to come in here and be quiet. That's fine, right? That feels happy. That, that makes me feel happy. It makes me feel great to just sit and relax for a little bit, right? But if we're on this side, right, we're feeling uncomfortable, then quiet usually means that, well, maybe we're afraid to talk. Maybe we don't know how to talk. Maybe we're not sure about, you know, what we should do. And I'm sure many of you have felt quiet. If any of you are new here at Og Prep this year, or were new any other year, it must be weird and a little scary to come in to a brand new school. So I've said before, right, I was new at five different schools. So on the first day, my five first days of school, when I was brand new, I was quiet, right, because I didn't know anybody, I was afraid to talk. And I'm sure many of you have felt that same way too. But the great thing about that is a lot of people sometimes notice, people especially who are nice and like to make friends, will notice someone who is quiet and say, hey, do you want to come over and talk with us? We'd like to get to know who you are. And there's always someone out there, friends, there's always someone who wants to get to know you a little bit better. So every time you feel a little scared, a little quiet at a new place, look out for the people with big smiles, friendly voices, because they will always help you feel better. All right? And that way, it's not so uncomfortable. Okay, let's see. Cranky. Yeah, cranky's an interesting one. Sometimes when we're cranky, we know we shouldn't be as upset about the things that we are upset about. So we're just, we wake up, we feel a little weird, we feel a little terrible. And usually, in order to feel cranky, Sometimes a friend or a parent will say to you, you know, you're being cranky. Maybe you're being a little too cranky about something. But most of the time, being cranky, you can figure something out yourself in order to do. I know when I feel cranky, I like to listen to slow, quiet music because that makes me feel better. Or I like to go on YouTube and watch you know, a fun video, something that makes me laugh, right? Usually something bright and cheerful and fun or something that's calming and relaxing makes me feel cranky. So I think the best way to solve being cranky is to do something for yourself, right? Think of something that makes you happy. Think of something that just makes your mind relax and put at ease. And whatever that thing is, it might be bugging you, making you just a little cranky, it'll probably go away. So that one, I think, my friends, is up to you. Now, here's a tough one. Lonely, right? Lonely is a difficult one to talk about. I've told you this a lot, my friends, but before I was a teacher, I was an actor. And I decided that in order to be the best actor I could be, once I finished college, I had to go and try acting in New York City. Big city, right? Lots of actors out there, Broadway, lots of things to do. 
And I was excited. I thought, hey, I'm going to go out there. And I remember I got my apartment. I was all set to go. I said goodbye to my mom, and she took a cab back to the airport. And then I walked back into my apartment and realized, oh my goodness, I'm in the biggest city in the world. I, I had some cousins who lived out there, right? But other than that, I didn't have a whole lot, at least not at first. I made friends, as many of who I still talk to today. But sometimes when you're by yourself a lot, you get lonely, right? And it happens. You kind of wish you had someone to talk to, someone who made you feel better. But again, you can always rely on your friends there, right? If you're feeling lonely, you feel like you're all by yourself, try to go out and, and meet someone or you know, meet friends, right? Or try to call somebody who you care about because chances are they care about you too. So think about the people in your life that are your friends, think about the people who are wonderful. And if you feel a little lonely and you're like you're all by yourself, they'll pick you up and they'll make you feel better. All right? Awesome, my friends. All right, and then the last one, the big one, sad, right? We all feel so, so incredibly sad. Oh, I'm sorry, not sad. I missed one. Discouraged. I missed the big one. How dare I? Discouraged. Something that should only take a little bit of time that takes a long time. Now, discouraged, there's something that discourages me right now. I mean, aside from the fact that I, I miss you all, right? I wish I could see you every day. That's a little discouraging, right? I miss my friends. I wish we could all be in a classroom. I wish I could see you. But you know what, my, my friends? I'm glad I get to make these videos for you. I'm glad I get to do it every day and give you guys something to work with. Now here's the problem I have though, and this is where this word comes into play. Now, I upload videos onto YouTube, right? And you guys always watch them every day. Now, some days I will go ahead and make a video for all of you. I will upload it and it will take no time at all. It's like, oh, processing, taking a little bit of time. Boop, your video is good, you can send it out. So Ms. Alanis and Ms. Widower can go ahead and give it to you guys. And sometimes it says it's going to take 45 minutes. And I don't know why, because the Wi-Fi is the exact same, and, but why does it take longer some days and not others? And I worry, I worry, is the video gonna upload? Do I have to make it again, right? Did I just teach this, this lesson that I think you guys are gonna really love and I lost it, right? So when it's slow and it takes a little more time, that's a little discouraging because I put in all this hard work and I just, oh, I really wanna make sure it uploads and it gets to you guys, right? So, as you can see, sometimes something that you think will take a short time takes a long time and it's more difficult than you thought, right? Okay, last one, sad. Sad, sad, sad. Well, there's lots of things that make us sad. And there was something that happened this summer that made me sad. So, my grandmother turned 90 this year. She is wonderful. She's led a great life. She's doing just fine. But because we all have to be safe and we have to stay inside and, you know, stay far apart from each other, we couldn't throw the big birthday party for her that we want to. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys. That made me feel very, very sad, right? So... I said to my dad, I said, look, I wish we could see her, you know, that would be great. And he could see how sad my mom was, because this is my grandmother, this grandmother I have is my mom's mother. So my dad started thinking, you know, what can we do, right? How can I cheer everybody up? Because the great thing about being sad is, sometimes you need to cry, and sometimes you feel better after you do that. Or sometimes you need to just sit and think about ways things can get better. You know, what can you do to make things better? But my dad immediately thought of something to stop everyone from being sad. He decided to tell all family, most of the families in Wisconsin, some are in Idaho, way out west, and some are in New York, right? And he said, hey, I have an idea, friends. Let's all, you know, let's have just a few people come over and we'll stay safely far apart, which some people did. But then the rest of us 
got on Zoom and we all wished her a very happy birthday. And she didn't know we were all gonna do that. And so she felt happy and no longer felt sad because everybody could say happy birthday to her. And we no longer felt sad, right? Because we were able to say it. So it's, it worked, right? So there you have it. There's always a way to cure sadness. All right, my friends, let's go ahead and review before we go back. So all these emotions, angry, confused, quiet, cranky, lonely, discouraged, and sad. Talking about them is tough. Talking about them is very difficult. But the best thing about all of these emotions, even cranky, which most of the time you can solve yourself, there's always a friend or a family member who is willing to talk. And ultimately, my friends, if somebody, somebody asks you what's wrong, a good friend asks you if everything's okay, don't be afraid to tell them because they want to help you and they want to make you feel better. Whether you're feeling angry, confused, quiet, cranky, lonely, discouraged, or sad. All right. I'm glad you listened to me today, my friends. This is a difficult conversation to have, right? But it's an important one. And hopefully that when I see you all in the building, some of you are coming back on November 9th, we'll be able to talk about uncomfortable emotions in a comfortable way and we'll all be able to make each other feel better. All right, my friends, tomorrow will be our last day of the emotions unit. We will finish off with a fun activity that you guys can do yourselves at home. And then the following week, we'll move on to something super exciting. My personal favorite part of drama. All right, my friends, be safe. I hope you all feel comfortable and I will see you all real soon. Be safe, my friends. Have a great day.